Okay, well now we're going to move on to the minor seventh chord, uh, the Dorian mode, which starts on the second degree of a major scale. And although if you, Abersol has this on volume 54, again, I'm focusing on that because the songs are not that difficult, but they are jazz standards that you will play for the rest of your life. Okay, so, and this is a modal piece, so it's based on two different scales. And even though it's based on a scale, it really only makes sense if I kind of make the sound of the chord in, in different, uh, different shapes within the scale rather than just running up and down a scale. And uh, so my focus is, is making the sound of the chord but using the scale to do it. So I've written this eight bar phrase uh, to make the sound of the minor seven chord. And for this one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play, we're gonna play along with a jazz workbook uh, drum track at the medium tempo, which is not all that slow. And of course, there's gonna be another track that's, is, uh, that's much slower than that. And what we're gonna do is gonna play through the exercise and it's very easy to get lost on a song like this because you've got 16 bars of one minor seven, then eight bars of another one, then eight bars of the first one. So most people end up, they don't know where the heck they are in the tune because the last eight is the same as the first 16. So that's part of the, the drill is to, is to get the form established in the sound of the chord. So I'm gonna play along with the drum track and then I'm just gonna lay out and you can, then you're gonna hear that the saxophone by itself is making the sound of the chord and using the scale to do it and uh, then maybe I'll come in at the bridge or whatever and but you know you can use the Abasol or the Jazz Workshop CD. So here we go. One, two, one, two, three. <laughs> Okay, so you see with the, um, with the play along, it's actually three choruses, 32 bars. So if you were playing along and you thought you were at the bridge right there, you would know you were off. So we always need to get some kind of checks and balance when we're practicing so that we know that our practices are positive, okay? And if you notice that uh, when Caleb was playing by himself, you could hear the chord in the time. 
And if you've gone online and seen any Chris Potter videos where he plays by himself, and of course Michael Brecker usually would do one song by himself on his gigs, and actually he has a solo a cappella on Naima, where if you put a metronome to it, it's in perfect time. So that tells me what? That's how they practice. They don't practice trying to play by ear along with a play along and say, oh, I heard the bridge and I'm getting good. No, they have to be independent musical source where they know exactly where they are, they know exactly what the chord they're trying to make a sound of. So now, you know, in our next, next song, I'm gonna take this minus seven uh, line, if you will, and, uh, and fit it into a different puzzle. And the puzzle, what I'm calling a puzzle, is a chord progression. And it repeats over and over and over again. So the idea of not analyzing that is ludicrous. Okay, if it's gonna, you know, we're gonna move on to footprints, which is only 12 bars long, but it's in 6-8 or 6-4, however it's written. And we're gonna use the minus seven line on this song, but on the, but the first chord only lasts for four bars, and then it changed to another minus seven up a fourth. So we're gonna, in the middle of that eight bars, is, is switched to a new, a new uh, minus seven, and then it goes back to the original one, which, you know, this might sound complicated when I'm explaining it, but when you hear it, you get the idea of it. And uh, that'll be the next song.